What's happening YouTube? Chevelle74US here. I got a request from uh, one of my viewers that they wanted to see more on my workbench. So here it is. Built this workbench. I must have been maybe like 19 years old, 20 years old, a long time ago. And uh, I, uh, it's mostly, it's constructed out of the main, the main frame or supports, the corners are four by fours on the corners. And then, um, it's wrapped in two by six all the way around on the top and on the bottom. And then it has two by four framing, which you'll see later on when I open up the cabinet, same thing on the bottom. Then I built this hood up here out of 2x6 and 2x4 plywood backing. This has a 3 quarter inch plywood. And I made these little shelves here. Now the, uh, the hood itself, I made, I made it to be modular because this whole setup here, let me back up and not trip on anything. This whole setup here weighs around between seven and eight, seven and eight hundred pounds, and um, it's it's really difficult to move. It's it's eight feet wide and three feet deep, and it's about seven feet tall, a little bit more than seven feet tall. So what I did was, so you see here, I got these heavy nuts and bolts with, with big washers. They go straight through the hood on both sides, through this, the quarter inch steel plate, and they're mounted underneath. And there's just two of them. You don't need a whole lot. And with the electrical, as you notice, uh, I've got a junction box underneath, which I'll show you when we get downstairs. And when this thing has to come apart, I just undo the wires in the junction box, pull the wire out, and uh, take those bolts off and pull it off. Uh, I had to do this for the first time since it was built, uh, about five years ago when we moved up here and it wasn't too bad yeah, I'm sure I can come up with some sort of quick di quick disconnect for the electrical but it, you know it's not very often I'm, you're gonna be moving something like this so just taking apart a junction box isn't too bad so not too long after I built it even though it has a three-quarter inch top I really wanted a uh, a much stronger surface so I got this piece of quarter inch steel cut for it and uh, it's a pretty heavy piece it took four guys to lift it off the truck and put it here um, and you know the three the through bolts from the uh, the hood you know keep it from moving around I know when I transported it on the trailer I just removed the hood and just put the bolts back in tighten them up and I that was more than enough to keep this from sliding and also uh, the vise is bolted through it so it's not going anywhere this is just a uh, Home Depot vise I picked up a long time ago um, this isn't a good spot for it because uh, of where it is in the garage but where it was originally it was perfect I didn't have any obstruction on the other side so I have this vise and then I have this vise which is really handy you know, you know, if I'm grinding something, a piece of metal or whatever, or carving a piece of wood, you know, it's right here. It's, it's at a good height. I still use that vise for some things like bending and prying, but I, I end up using this vise more often. Uh, what else? So outlets and lighting, the electrical part of it. So this is... Uh, this is this is the the rubber cord that I have uh, that comes out of this whole setup. 
it's on a 12 gauge wire obviously it's it's all one circuit uh, I have the light up here I also have a light down here I got the switches here this one uh, this one controls this light and then that one you'll see controls what I call downstairs and I have one two three four five six receptacles this one's the newest addition for like 15 years all I had was was this setup over here uh, which is fine um, you're not you're not really running a whole lot of things simultaneously here having all these outlets just makes it easy to have you know multiple grinders plugged in at the same time so I don't have to unplug and plug you're not going to use two grinders at the same time you're not going to use your your chop saw and your grinder you're not going to be your bench grinder you're not going to run all that stuff simultaneously but having a, a a good amount of outlets is great for having chargers plugged in simultaneously multiple tools and things like that um a couple of years ago i picked up this little craftsman i think it's a 70 series drill press from I think 1948 and uh, I bolted it in it's a great uh, drill press it's got a nice I think it's a three-quarter horsepower motor I got like a little light over here help me with, with drilling I put an LED bulb in here and that's that's pretty good so that's when I added uh, this outlet up here I added this outlet up here and brought it into that that outlet and I also have my air compressor plugged into it um, this is a 30 gallon Husky I got a couple of years ago at Home Depot 160 PSI max uh, it's a good compressor for most things I don't really use air tools as much anymore because now you know, with uh, battery-powered tools, you know, the, the Milwaukee Impacts. I mean, even every major brand has a really good quality uh, impact. Now, it's, it's, it's almost using air tools practically obsolete now. But I use it for die grinders and, you know, blowing things off, airing up tires. It's good. And I do have some air tools, some other air tools that I still use with it. So up here... I just keep miscellaneous things. I got the shop radio here, and uh, I keep the remote right here. I just took a piece of uh, electrical conduit strapping, and then I took a. Uh, this is from a from a, an electrical box, a gem box, and I just this is like it's on the front of the box, and I just took that off, and it kind of creates a little a little stopper there. Um, I guess I could talk a little bit about the electrical service I have coming in here. It's kind of part of the workbench thing because it feeds the workbench and 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 uh, and and the tools that I run off the workbench. So this is a originally this garage. I mean, at some point it had electrical. They had like a small box over there, and it was just a. Uh, piece of 14 wire that was like stretch across the overhead like uh, from from the house to a pole on the garage the garage is about 110 feet away from the house and it just all it did was it fed one one light and one outlet this wasn't really used to you know to, to really do much in other than just store you know lawn equipment and a tractor or whatever but uh I ran a hundred amp service here from the house and uh, I have uh, all my circuit breakers here. I got a breaker that's dedicated just for for this set of outlets over here. And uh, I also have a sub 30 amp sub panel that I uh, ran an underground service going to my shed over there. So I have. Uh, I have light and heat and air conditioning, all that good stuff over there, and outlets and whatnot. So this is all 
done in pipe. And I got an outlet for my for my welder. And uh, ooh, mail. Cool. And um, I have uh, another 220 outlet. And I got all my switches here labeled. I mean, I know what they are, but sometimes, you know, my my better half, she doesn't come in here that often. So if I tell her, hey, turn off the pole light or, or turn on the garage light or whatever, she's not fumbling around. It's really more for her than me. Little thermometer here. Got a little mirror so I can check myself out. And uh, I got this really cool uh, Fahrenheit heater. Um, I think it's like 7,500 watts, and this garage is not insulated, but it does a really good job of of heating the place up from cold. I mean, I, I don't heat it when I'm not around, but if it's brutally cold out, I'll come in, I'll turn it on, come back 45 minutes later, and the garage is toasty. It's only 400 square feet. Anyway, back to this, because this is really what you guys wanted to see. Um, up top, I keep my chemicals, my... My degreasers and liquid wrench and lithium greases, WD-40s, things of that nature. That is a, it's from my grandfather's last car. It was a 1997 Mercedes C220 and he retired in Florida. So when he passed away, I ended up with the car for a while and then uh, another family member wanted it and then it just, caught fire in their driveway, so that's the only thing left of it. <laughs> uh, here's a bunch of, you know, spray paints and paint prep SEM stuff. Uh, this Corrosion X stuff here is really good stuff. Corrosion X. I get this on Amazon and I always like to keep this stuff on hand. You spray this on any bare metal surface it kind of creates like this nice coating, keeps things from rusting, and uh, yeah, I use that stuff all the time. The, uh, I mean, this top is good, I want to say like 18 years old, so, and it looks good, and really the only thing I've done to it is I just spray it with WD-40 and wipe it with a rag, that's it. And uh, lately, ever since I got into the Corrosion X, I'll spray it with the Corrosion X, um, you know, to kind of help with preserving it. Uh, but quarter inch top, man, steel top, for the money, you can't beat it. You know, to have a, you know, a welder or a metal fab shop in town cut you a piece of steel for whatever workbench you have. It just it just makes it so you know you could pound on it. Um, I mean I've even welded on this before I had a, a small folding Miller fab table. Um, I even put if you look at my other videos I put a, a three sixteenths inch steel top on my Harbor Freight toolbox and I put a little vise there uh, and that just makes all the difference in the world. I mean that's a solid solid work surface so that's really great. I uh, put a pegboard up here too, and this has changed a lot over the years because the purpose of this workbench has changed a lot. You know, when I first built it and I was living at home with my parents and I was collecting, starting with tools, this kind of was my everything workbench. So I, you know, I used to have all kinds of mostly carpentry tool stuff here, levels and and uh, measuring, measuring implements and squares and things like that, uh, and just a mix of everything, automotive and mechanical, but over the years I've kind of separated things, you know, I got my, my large shed on the other side of the parking area, and that's where I keep all my carpentry stuff, and then the garage is everything that's car and metal working, and this is primarily what this, what this has uh, turned into. So, you know, I got all my welding clamps, these are my Miller uh, welding clamps for the small folding fab table which I have which is really awesome I highly recommend it it's like a 36 by 36 inch folding table 
I want to say it was like, you can probably get it for like about 225, 250 bucks. Uh, it's buried back there so you can't see it, but, uh, one day I'll make a video about it. Or if you guys are interested, shoot me a comment and I'll, I'll make a video about it. So the pegboard's good because I can just rearrange what I put on here all the time. I got my clamps up here. I got my my craftsman block, you know, quote unquote block. That's what they lovingly refer to these things. Bench grinder. It's bulletproof. It's an animal. I love it. Uh, recommend getting one if you could, guys can still find one. I think they stopped making these like maybe 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago. Uh, and then I, you know, I added these these boxes just to. I mean, they're kind of sorted, but not really. You know how it goes. So it just keeps all like the little miscellaneous stuff in place. What else? What else? What else? I guess we can take a look downstairs. So the uh, yeah, these just plywood doors, and I got like some one by trim, and it's kind of crudely done. You know, like when I built this, I didn't. I didn't I didn't have very many tools and like I said I was like 19 or 20 still living at home I think uh I I just used a circular saw and uh a a jigsaw and 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 not a whole lot more than that you know just everything's uh, screwed I I really overbuilt it kind of unnecessarily but when you know you know when you when you don't know as much you, sometimes you tend to really really overdo things just to err on the side of caution. So, I mean, all these pieces, they're all glued together, they're screwed, so it's, and it's just really solid. So, I got these doors, and I got the latches up top and up bottom. And I'll flip this switch over here. And I didn't flip the switch. Did I? Oh, the light is on. It's just really cold in here, so the fluorescent bulbs take a long time to warm up. Uh, I put LEDs in the rest of the shop, and they turn on quickly, but I still haven't upgraded these. So you can see I got a, quite a bit of room down here. I got some scrap pieces of metal here. I got a 8 and 3 quarter center section for a Mopar. I got a... A body rear end for my dart, an eight and three quarter. I got some super stock springs. I've got a 727 transmission. I got my metal cutting saw and can of carb cleaner, some old license plates and miscellaneous things. But yeah, you can kind of see the construction like of how I built it. Yeah, those are the until I mounted the uh, bench, not the um, the drill press. You can see, you know, four by four construction. So it's uh, yeah, it's sealed up pretty good over here. And it's got some casters, but the the rubber. Or the plastic on the casters on the you know the tires for the casters they they dry rotted so I, that's one thing I gotta do I gotta replace those um, what else so you're probably curious about this this is the newest edition I uh, I wanted to figure out a way that I could uh, use this bench grinder and because I have different, I have I have this bench grinder, I have a bench polisher, uh, you know. Then there's also a tabletop belt sander, uh, different types of bench top tools that I don't want to permanently bolt bolt down here. I mean, the drill press I permanently bolted down, but all the other stuff I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. So I took a hitch receiver. I took a quarter inch steel plate cut a hole 
put the receiver inside of it, ran a heavy bead all the way around it, and then I cut a hole in the front of the workbench in the 2x6, and I routed this out to flush mount it. And now, the idea is, for each one of these tools, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have one of these hitches, and I'm gonna get, you know you can get these pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. This happens to be a a Kurt one I have laying around, but take a piece of quarter inch plate, uh, drill mounting holes, bolt it to you know weld it onto here, and then bolt it onto whatever machine you have, and then you could simply slide it in here. And then from the back, you could just take your pin and lock it in. And now it's at a nice height where you can work on it. And when you're done, the idea is I'm going to have a couple ideas. Either maybe take like a 4x4 post and then put some, um, some uh, hitch receivers like... I think I have one over here that I bought to kind of experiment with. Something like this. And I'll kind of bolt it to the side of a 4x4 or 6x6. And I'll have a couple of these going down. Or maybe I'll make like some sort of shelf and I'll have them underneath it. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But the idea is I'll have all these bench top machines bolted to it bolted to their own receivers, um, their own hitches, and then when I want to take it, I just pull it off of its mounting surface, pop it in here. I'll probably cut in an outlet over here so I don't have to run a cord over there. I mean, it's not much of a ways to run it, so it doesn't matter. And, uh, yeah, that's the idea for that. And then when I'm done with it, just put this cover and I'm done. But this has, I mean, the, the use is... You can be creative as you want with this. I even have a um, a hitch mount bike rack. You know, like the ones that kind of, they go out like this from the hitch. They go up and then out and then the bikes hang over here. I have one of those. I could just stick that in there with the bike and it holds the bike up nice and high so I can do maintenance, you know, uh, t any sort of repair, replace a chain take the wheels off to swap out the tires. I don't have to have the bike upside down on the handlebars. I don't have to crouch down. Now the bike's kind of at this level. So that's really handy. And there's all different types of hitch accessories for going into receivers. Um, I can get a couple of different types of vices and uh, they even make uh, hitch vice adapters for pickup trucks you can just buy one of those so you don't even have to custom make one and they kind of have a universal uh, bolt flange and you can bolt whatever vice you want in there stick it in there you have a vice right in front of you you're not reaching uh all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff so yeah we'll see what other ideas i come up with this but i think that's pretty much it you know, it's not a, you know, not a difficult thing to build. You know, I think it, you know, it took me half a day or about a day to build this. You know, some 2x4s, some 2x6s, some, you know, 4x4s. And uh, then later on I got the quarter inch steel top. And do a little bit of electrical. And that's it. And it served me well. And, and I've been able to adapt it for different uses and uh, I expect to keep this forever anyway that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching uh, click that uh, subscribe button if you want to see you know more of my videos garage related stuff tools and what have you and that's pretty much it all right thanks